Hey guys, welcome back to The Blind Life. Today we're talking about how I see with Stargardt's disease. So I think throughout my life, by far, the question I've gotten the most, other than how many fingers am I holding up, inside blind joke, if you're low vision, you'll get that reference, uh, is how do you see? Well, what do you see? What's Stargardt's like? Um, I've gotten that question so many times and it's such a hard question to answer because, you know, vision, it's, it's relative, right? Everybody sees differently. So I made a video about this many, many years ago and I was actually looking at that video, watching that video yesterday and I realized how terrible that video is. It took me like 10 minutes just to get to the point, although I think I'm doing that right now also. ah. So I'm gonna try and give a crude explanation of how I see, how I have Stargardt's disease. Um, it's, a, it's a type of macular degeneration. So if you have Stargardt's or if you have macular degeneration, this might be similar to how you see. And you might be able to use this video and share it with people and, and say this right here, this is how I see also. So you might see a picture like this. All right, it's the stereotypical picture with the large black spot right in the middle. And this is what everybody always references and they say, this is how macular degeneration looks like. This is what it is. You got your large black spot in the middle, your blind spot, and everything around it is kind of fuzzy. And the truth is, that's not accurate at all. <laughs> I understand it, it's, it's kind of on paper, that's what you would think it was, but that's not the way I see at all. I don't see a large black spot. I don't see, you know, I, even though I don't have any central vision, I do have a blind spot, it's not this giant black blob floating in the middle of my central vision. Uh, I don't see a spot at all. I just don't see anything there. And this is why it's really hard for people to wrap their minds around it, wrap their heads around it, is it heads? Is it minds or heads? I think it's heads. Wrap their heads around it. And it's also why it's hard to explain. Because you might say, well, if you don't have any central vision, then surely you have a large black spot. If you don't have a large black spot, what do you see? And the thing is, your brain tries to fill in what's missing from the central vision. Especially if you've lived with a blind spot as long as I have. I'm going on 30 plus years of uh, having no central vision. So my brain has had a plenty of time to adapt. And so it tries to fill in what's missing from the central vision. And it does this by gathering information around it uh, with the peripheral. So for example, if I'm looking at where I'm assuming the camera is, oh, there it is, yeah. There's no camera there, but my brain fills in the colors of the wall behind it. I always say it's it's really the coolest magic trick out there because I can make anything I want to disappear, but unfortunately I'm the only one that can see the magic trick. <laughs> so the brain fills in the colors of the wall behind the camera, and it works the same if I'm looking at my phone on this desk. I don't see the phone, I just see kind of a blurry blob of desk color. So here is a shot of a, an air conditioning vent. So as you see here, when I look directly at this air conditioning vent, it disappears and the wall color kind of fills in the blank space. Meanwhile, if I look away from it, it pops up in my peripheral vision and I can see it. Now, I still can't see the detail of it because we use central vision to see detail. And that's another reason why it's kind of confusing for people to understand how I see because I can be looking at the camera and I can see my phone here, I see this phone, I see this tripod stand, I see the remote over here, I see this phone case. It's like I can see all of those things around me even though I'm looking directly at the camera because I've adapted to use my peripheral view vision to see everything. But I can't see detail because we don't use peripheral to see detail. We use central vision for detail. So even though I can see myself on a monitor right here using my peripheral, I can't read any of that stuff on the monitor, even though it's a giant 32 inch monitor and it's close enough that I can touch it. 
I can't read any of that stuff. Even if I were to look over in that area and use some of my more centralized peripheral vision just on the edge of my blind spot, I can see that there's words written on there, but I still can't read them because, once again, I don't have any of that detail vision uh, that's my central vision. But that's kind of getting off topic here. So here's another example. I'm looking at this coffee cup on a counter. And once again, as I bring that mug into my central vision, it disappears and my brain tries to fill in the colors of the countertop. Now I should also mention that my vision is much better in bright conditions, although <laughs> everything about my vision is, is kind of a contradiction. Uh, even though I need bright light to see things, I'm also slightly photophobic, which means bright light uh, is painful or you know it's sensitive. My eyes are sensitive to bright light. So if I go outside on a super bright sunny day, it's painful and I need sunglasses. Meanwhile, <laughs> if I'm inside, bright light is awesome. Bright light is my friend. I need some extra task lighting to see what I'm trying to do. So because of that, I don't do well in the evening times out and about. If I'm trying to walk through a parking lot or something like that, it's very difficult for me to do that in the evening times. And that is when I pull out my cane and I use my canes. We got a whole bag full of canes over there. <laughs> so even though during the day, nice bright conditions, I don't need a cane for navigation, it comes in very, very helpful in the evening times in low light conditions. So start using your canes, people. All right, let me jump in real quick and just to reiterate and emphasize the fact that another reason why it's difficult for me to explain what my blind spot looks like is because I don't notice it very often. I've been living with Stargardt's for so long and I rely so heavily on my peripheral vision that it's very rare that I use my central vision and look directly at things. In fact, when I force myself to do that, it puts a lot of strain on my eyes. It's physically uncomfortable in my eyes. And so yet another reason why I don't do it. So if I'm not paying attention to my central vision, I don't notice my blind spot. Okay, so I will link the other video that I did also. I mean, it kind of goes over the same basic stuff. Please don't judge me too harshly on the quality of that video, both in my performance and the actual video and audio quality. It's terrible. <laughs> I was still young. I was still a newbie at making videos. I didn't know anything. And like I said, if this video applies to you, if, if you kind of are watching this video and you're like, yes, that's exactly how I see as well, share the video. Share it on Facebook, share it all over the place. Say, this is how I see, stop asking me. <laughs> Okay guys, that's it for me. As always, thank you very much for watching. If you liked this video, you found it helpful, be sure to hit the like button. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. It's like 75% of the people that watch my videos are not subscribed to my channel. I have over 560 videos on my channel <laughs> and I put out a new video every single week on blindness. So subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications so you'll be alerted every time I put out a new video. Leave the comments and questions down below. I read all of them and answer most of them. <laughs> but that's it, guys. As always, Sam with the Blind Life. I will see you next week. I don't, why do people always do that? It's hard to do when you're blind, though, because I can never see where the lens is. I'm going to look over here. Okay.